Welcome back everyone. So in this video, we'll be running our experimentation on the FPGA. Uh, what we're going to do is first step is we're inside the FPGA node. We have the three images built. We go inside the SN-stack uh, directory, which is the directory where we'll be bringing up the stack from. Similar to the directory, it's uh, similar to the repository itself. This directory also has an example.env. Uh, that we need to copy and into dot env and edit this uh, environment file So one important thing to note here is we need to specify the FPGA bus address of the the F bus address of the Alveo card we're using <coughs> uh, For me, I know it it's 1f uh, colon 00 if you want to check you can run lspci dash vd then ee colon and here you can see this is one way to check and of course the dot zero or dot one we ignore uh, another way to check is just type in lspci and then grep and then xilinx and from there we double check we have with one f the other thing we need to set is the composed profiles so we're mainly concerned with two profiles over here, which are the SmartNIC Manager VFO, VFIO Unlock and the DPDK Manual one. Now VFIO Unlock, what it happens here is that as soon as I load up my stack, my artifacts are loaded on the FPGA and the FPGA is fully functional. As soon as I do that, I have my FPGA running as a smart network card. As long as the stack is running, my bid files are on, on the FPGA and it is acting as a network card. Uh, the DPTK manual uh, <coughs> composed profile is slightly different. What it does is that it locks the card, not allowing any packets in or out and not allowing us to access any registers or modify any configurations or use any smart NIC tools. Uh, unless dpdk and package gen are running so it locks the card unless package gen is running once i open up package gen it allows me to control the card completely and uh, control how packets are going in and going out when package gen is running i can configure the fpga if packets go in and they go out it acts as a smart nick uh, once i close package gen it shuts down again it locks again i can't modify anything i load p a package gen again we go back to full control. <coughs> so one thing to note here is to set it to for our testing VFIO unlock and save and quit. Now the way to bring up the stack is to run docker compose up dash D. And cons uh, this varies in time whether I'm loading the exact same artifacts I had loaded before or if I'm loading new ones. But in uh, our benchmarking, it, it runs, the upper bound is roughly around seven minutes. So uh, even if it runs for a while, don't be alarmed. Uh, <coughs> as you can see in our case, it'll probably run around 60 to 70 seconds. And uh, as soon as the stack loads, we can experiment on our card and we can explore the connect x6 node as well so we're gonna do that while it loads as we said this is where our nodes uh, description is you can see the connect x6 node we can copy the ssh command now one thing to note about the ssh command is that it assumes you have the both pairs of keys so uh, if you go on to replicate it on your system rather than using jupyter hub you need to follow fabrics uh, uh, <coughs> guides and setting up the pairs of SSH keys on your system. Now you can see here I am inside the ConnectX6 node. If I type LSPCI, you can see here my ConnectX6 is at bus 7, 0700, and 070800. And for my interface, you can see here tells me my interfaces are called ENP7S0 and ENP8S0. We can check that by seeing them here. And one thing to note is that they're both down by default, which is something that we can manually control. As you can see here, it took s around 70 seconds to load. And I can go inside 
my Smarnik uh, Docker image by saying Docker compose exec Smarnik dash firmware or FW bash. This takes me inside it, and of course, everything here is running as root. And this is also a privileged Docker container. So inside here, you have the power to wreck your node and make it not function well. So I would be careful with the commands I run here. Just because it is Dockerized, it does not mean that it is isolated from uh, <coughs> from uh, leaking onto the uh, outside world or outside system, if you want to call it, which is in our case here, the CX6 node. So inside here, we can we have all sorts of tools. One of them is devtemp. Of course, all of the commands are inside the sn-cli. So devtemp shows me the temperature of the Alveo card itself in Celsius. Dev uh, version, it shows me the version information of the FPGA. Another thing is sn-cli probe stats. So as you can see here, this provides me all with all kinds of helpful statistics. As you can see, they're all still zeros. So from CMAC1, this means packets that are received from the first port on the actual FPGA. From CMAC1, uh, one, sorry, this is CMAC0. From CMAC1 is the second port. From host PF0, this means from the host's physical function 0. And here, physical function 1. This means packets received from the PCI bus. So if I send packets to PackageGen or DPDK, as you saw in the previous uh, videos in running uh, DPDK, you can see them registering here. Now Smartnik platform to P4 app 0. This number here is the number of packets that after getting in from these four channels, this is the number of packets that get to app 0 and this is the number of packets that get to app 1. Now app 0 here is uh, my P4 logic. App 1 is in the case I load some other hardware description uh, logic such as uh, the system Verilog. This is uh, outside the scope of what we're discussing here but you can see it in the YesNet Smartnik HW repository and the P4 and Verilog example. And of course, you can see the count of packets that go directly to bypass or the ingress black hole before without reaching the logic we've written. Similarly, we have the egress, which shows packets going out of our P4 logic or out of our Verilog logic. And from there, where are they going? Physical function 0 or 1, or CMAC 0 or CMAC 1. And for each of these outputs, you can see multiple lines. So this is for packets that are okay, this is for packets that were dropped, and this is when packets tend to overflow. And uh, <coughs> to not make this video long, uh, we've shown you some tools, and the next video we will be running our first experiment. Then thank you very much.